totally okay with the gay thing. I was in the closet. I'm out. Goodbye, Mr. Hyman. You're firing our accountant? God bless television. Please welcome the star of Fraser, Mr. Kelsey Grammer. Good evening. We interrupt day three of the Dustin Hoffman Golden Globes tribute <laughs> to bring you the 11th annual American Comedy Awards. So far this year, we've had the Globes, People's Choice, American Music Awards, and the ESPYs. Actors, jocks, and musicians have been covered, but tonight we focus on comedians, so you won't hear too many insincere speeches thanking executives, hairdressers, executive hairdressers, and spiritual advisors. But don't despair. In future weeks, you will have the opportunity to hear all this and more on over 30 televised award extravaganzas, such as the Grammys, the SAG Awards, the Oscars, Billboards, Blockbuster, Cable Ace, Soap Operas, Tonys, Teachers, Cleos, Country Music, Soul Train, Stellar, and Image Awards, the Kennedy Center Honors, VH1 Honors, AFI Tributes, MTV Video, MTV Movie, MTV Fashion, Parents' Choice, Kids' Choice, Viewers' Choice, Taster' Choice, and of course, Pro Choice. Thank you. All of these shows are just one big, gigantic plot to get actors to work for nothing. <laughs> but this is the most prestigious award show on television tonight, so. <laughs> Proof of that is the fact that we have in our audience a very illustrious gentleman from the mother country. As a matter of fact, he is the reason they call it the mother country. This is the first time he's attended the comedy awards. Let's all welcome our comedy cousin from across the pond, the best friend a furry creature ever had, the Minister of Silly Walks, Mr. John Cleese. <laughs> and now we present awards to a group of fine actors who will also not receive a dime from this dog and pony show. In the category of funniest female in a television special, the favorites are, from The Late Shift, Kathy Bates. Look, well, we've always played the same game. You never want to know what I'm doing for you so you can be Mr. Nice Guy. You just want me to keep serving you the steaks. You never want to know how I'm slaughtering the cow. From the 38th Annual yeah. Grammy Awards, Five, Ellen DeGeneres. Six, seven, eight. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Please stick to the booty sup and booty sup. Booty sup and booty sup. Excuse me, uh, Ellen, you got about uh, one minute to All right, we're working on the number. Thanks. All right. And booty uh, sup. And we catch a rising star's 50th anniversary, oh, give or take 26 you. years, Rosie there O'Donnell. There he is. It's the best thing in the world. I adopted my son, and it's, it's a very unique experience to adopt a baby because, you know, literally, the adoption agency, they knock on the door, like Federal Express, and they hand you your son, you know? I was very nervous, so I had the epidural anyway, you know what I mean? On the 10th Annual American Comedy Awards, the late time. American Comedy Awards. <laughs> I'm having such a good time on my keyboards. This is CD-ROM, this is online, and this is heart and soul. And this year's favorite is, well, it's Kathy Bates in The Late Show. much less than nominating me with these ladies. It's a very great honor. Uh, I wish one of them was here to help me with this speech. Um, I'd like to thank HBO. I'd like to thank Ivan Reitman. And, and most of all, Betty Thomas for being a terrific director and helping me with a very difficult role that I really love doing. Thank you all very much. The star of Mad About You, please welcome Paul Reiser. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is indeed an honor for me to pre be presenting an award tonight, an American Comedy Award. Um, I would like to point out that I am here presenting while I myself 
um, nominated for nothing. And I just, I just think that is very friggin' decent of me. Um, it speaks very highly, it really does. Um, it's a special feeling uh, to present when not nominated. Uh, it's sort of, sort of like if your wife leaves you for another guy and then they ask you to drive them places. It's sort of like that. <laughs> so you're involved, but without any of the real joy. You know what I'm saying. You're participating, but never not aware of the painful, stinging reminder of what might have been. So, I thought it was worth mentioning. It is indeed an honor uh, I am to, 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 to present this, uh, this award, the category of the funniest male guest appearance in a television series. The comedian's favorites are, from The Nanny, Jason Alexander. Oh, hi, Jack. Come on in. Did you have any trouble finding the place? Uh, no more than usual. <laughs> from Mad About You, Mel Brooks. We had a fight, I defend. <laughs> like a real fight, a professional oh, fight? Oh, what moves, what moves? Hooks, jabs, anything you want. Dancing, boom, tippy-toe, tippy-toe, turn, one, two, one, one. It was fantastic. Fanta until he got into the ring. From Saturday Night Live, Jim Carrey. Where I come from, spastic facial contortions are considered the ultimate in artistic achievement. <laughs> and talking out of one's butt crack <laughs> is a sign of personal confidence. From the Larry Sanders Show, I'm, David Duchovny. That's okay, I'm not, I'm not gay, I'm, I'm also straight. I'm glad we talked you about it. You know, but sometimes, because... sometimes I do wish that I was gay recently because I find you very attractive. From Frazier, Nathan Lane. No, I'm saying you're right. I'm not trying to weasel out of this. I'm guilty, and I deserve what I get. Look, here's your keys. The car's out front with your briefcase in it. Here, go ahead and call the police. That's your new car phone, by the way. I upgraded. <laughs> And this year's favorite is Mr. Mel Brooks, Mad About You. I'd like to thank, I'd like to. I may not. I may not. I'm really, I'm really torn. I'm being, you know, I, I, I wing things. I don't, I don't prepare anything. I either feel and I say or I don't. I'm, I'm incredibly uh, honest and I'm, I'm incredibly ad lib. I'd like to thank Paul Reiser, Helen Hunt, and John Panko, these wonderful, talented people that work with me. It slowed me up a little. And I'd like to thank the producers of Man About uh, You, me, you, Larry Charles, Victor Levin, Richard Day, and I'd like to thank Harvey uh, Lembeck's uh, son, Michael Lembeck, who, uh, who directed so beautifully. I'd like to thank. I'm not sure, because, I, I mean, I worked very hard on that show. I mean, I don't do that that often. And I'd also like to thank, I will thank, I thank you all, and I'd like to also thank George M. Cohen for, for writing my favorite song, Yankee Doodle Dandy. I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yankee Doodle, do or die. Is he going to really sing the banana? Yes! A real live nephew of my uncle. Next day, Lily Tomlin and Roseanne present comedy awards to the funniest stand-up comedians. The 11th Annual American Comedy Awards brought to you by Cheerios with the toasted oat taste you love, the one and only Cheerios, and the new Dodge. It's about change. <laughs> A truck's life is filled with slings and arrows, including the inevitable flying stones and unmanned shopping carts. 
So we designed the all-new Dodge Dakota with software that optimizes dent resistance. Life on the road may be a battle, but Dakota has superior armor. The new Dodge Dakota. It's full of surprises. Hi, honey. Hey, how was your checkup? It's fine. Really? Yeah, the heart's good. And your cholesterol? Good. You know, the doctor said the healthy diet is paying off. See? You better keep eating those Cheerios. The FDA says that whole grain oat soluble fiber as part of a diet low in saturated fat and cholesterol may reduce the risk of heart disease. And Cheerios is the number one ready to eat whole grain oat cereal. I always knew you had a good heart. You did? Mm -hmm. That's why I married you. I thought you married me because I was good looking. The one and only Cheerios. When I give my girls cold medicine, they think I'm the mean mom. So their pediatrician said Dimatap. The brand pediatricians recommend most for colds. It gives them relief with a great, great taste. <laughs> now, I'm the good mom again. Doctors say Dimatap for good reason. Jergens Ultra Healing Lotion absorbs completely to help restore your skin's natural moisture and make it touchably soft. Make the most of the special moments you share. Jergens Ultra Healing Lotion. Because life is touching. Okay, guys, to work on your dunking skills, we brought in the experts. Now there's a great deal on McDonald's Chicken McNuggets. I want to see some crisp passing. Grab six while they're just 99 cents. And then take it to the hole. Nine are only 159. You called that a dunk? Easy, Grant. Right now, 20 McNuggets are just 299, perfect with America's favorite fries. Watch my slam. Yes! That's a dunk. <laughs> McDonald's Chicken McNuggets, America's favorite way to dunk. Tuesday, Dan returns to face their greatest challenge. She's only seven months pregnant. All I want to do is save the baby. The season's most powerful Roseanne. And it's a special bonus, Drew's very first episode. Check out Mimi. She came in looking like something my nephew colored. Then Jill drags the family to a night of art and poetry. Die. Go on, die. You first. An all-new home improvement. Then it's a star-studded Spin City with Rosie O'Donnell, George Stephanopoulos, and a special mystery wow. guest. Wow. It's a blast. ABC Tuesday. Ladies and gentlemen, David Allen Greer. Now, I've been watching these awards for the last 11 years, and I've noticed that there's been a glaring omission from the illustrious roster of honorees. No one has ever paid tribute to the man who started it all. The true king of comedy, William Shakespeare. Now, I ask you, without the bard, could there ever have been a Sanford and Son or a Gilligan's Island? Not likely. Will has provided the concept for every major network comedy series without ever being given the credit. Norman Lear took the credit. Now, I've met Norman Lear. I know Norman Lear. And I think I can safely say, Norman, you're no King Lear. America, wake up. The shows that you've watched on television were written over 400 years ago. Only the names have been changed. Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet became TV's Joni Loves Chachi. His comedy of errors, America's Funniest Home Videos. Julius Caesar and his show of shows, Twelfth Night Court. And on and on and on. The man was a veritable Ron Paul Peel of comedy invention. But does he ever get a comedy award? Nay. Forsooth, my liege, now is the sweet weep of our discontent made glorious by the third rock from the sun. What light from yon windows 95 breaks? Is it the East and Julia Louis-Dreyfus who is having a son and cannot be with us here tonight? What's in a name? That which we call a Roseanne signifying nothing but asking for a million dollars of rice? Alas, poor Ovitz. I knew him well before his golden parachute doth plummeteth to earth mewling and puking sans teeth, sans hair, sans job. Good night, sweet artist, formerly known as Prince and 
Charlie's angels speed thee to thy rest. Desdemona, this is the big one, honey. Party of five is such sweet sorrow that I shall say goodnight until it be tomorrow with Tom Snyder. Out, damn spot! I said I wasn't gonna let this happen. Uh, wow, thank you so much. Uh, whew, boy, excuse me. <clears throat> and now, oh boy. And now there are two people who deserve these flowers a lot more than I do. A real comedy bouquet, a lily and a rose. Lily Tomlin and Roseanne. Well, before we present this award, I have to say something to you, Roseanne. I have to say that I have to mention the fact that you opened the door for a lot of performers, and you were the first one to go straight from stand-up into your own sitcom. Thank you. <laughs> and because of your incredible success and your innovation and uh, just being Roseanne and being Rosie, you opened the door for a lot of people, and a lot of people followed after you, and you made the planet better. And those people that followed were people like Ellen and Brett and Seinfeld and Tim Allen and Anthony Clark and Steve Harvey and Martin Lawrence and Gary Shanley and Paul Reiser and Drew Carey and Jeff Foxworthy and from all stand-ups. Well, I won't say all, but in the abstract, I would say stand-ups everywhere. <laughs> I thank you, Roseanne. Thank you. Show me the money. You also opened the door to a whole new generation of writers. Yes. And without me there to hold their hands, they've all moved on to wonderfully mediocre careers at Fox. And I'm proud to say that each and every one of them calls me friend. Up until, oh wait, well, Is that until you, you, no, wait a minute, no, no, I'm, this is coming from my heart. Oh. Until the, <laughs> Can we so, just, can we just get on with this? Yes. We're here to present the award. Now, we've made too much fun of this, but Roseanne. What? I think you're pretty special. I think you're so great, Lily. Thank oh. you for saying that to me. No, I think that's a good. Yes, you are, are so awesome. We're here to present the award to this year's new young stand-up comics. The suggestions for these nominees came from a survey of leading comedy clubs. Clips of all the nominees were run for 10 days on a special Comedy Central salute to the American Comedy Awards, so 32 million subscribers to Comedy Central had a chance to phone in and vote for their favorite in the largest survey of this kind. In the female stand-up comic audience survey conducted by Comedy Central, the favorites are Kathy Buckley. People ask me all the time, how do you wake up in the morning if you can't hear an alarm? We have a special alarm that's called Check Away. We put you in the time you want to wake up, put it underneath your pillow, and it'll vibrate the pillow. I said, screw that, I strapped that thing on my inner thigh. Diane Ford. Women aren't the only ones that are vain about their hair, though. Men are vain about their hair, too. I know men really like to run their fingers through their hair. You ever notice that? I guess that's why when they go bald, they start wearing really baggy pants. <laughs> Mary Ellen Hooper. Our first date was like dinner and a movie. I wouldn't even eat in front of them, because, you know. <laughs> I'm so dainty. <laughs> Lettuce, I'm full. <laughs> yeah, look over there. Ah! Sheila Kay. I wear bifocals. That's how old I am. Which is a good thing. I look at your weenie, it looks huge. <laughs> Wendy Liebman. I didn't even marry my high school sweetheart. I had a typical high school romance. You know, I was a cheerleader and he was on the faculty. And we were... Um... <laughs> and the winner is... Wendy Liebman. Well, thank 
God. Um, I just want to thank Ron Lynch and, oh, you know him? Um, I want to thank my parents. Um, I love you. I got my sense of humor from them, and that's why they don't have one anymore. <laughs> They're not here. And I'd like to um, thank everybody who has helped me. I love you. I really do. And finally, I want to thank Lily and Roseanne for giving me this award. Thank you very much. Congratulations. After the show, we'll flash an 800 number for all of you network executives to place your bids for her new series. <laughs> in the male stand-up in the male stand-up comic audience award, Dave Attell. Don't you ever wish you could have sex with the first person you ever had sex with again just to show them how good you got at it? I mean, really. Hey, made it past your thigh. Well, Durst. You gotta feel bad for Bob Dole. I mean, this is the fourth time he's run for the presidency. Shouldn't three strikes apply here? <laughs> Dom Irera. You ever been to Ireland? Most beautiful people in the world. They have the worst diet in the world. It's the only place I've ever been. Would you like more fat with your fat? <laughs> Would you like a side of fatty fat with your fat burger? <laughs> and some cream on that fat? Craig Shoemaker. My mom was great, though. She used to say, you're just going to have to be our little man of the house. Man of the house. I'm six years old. I'm built like Barney Fife from Mayberry. <laughs> I'm trying to order my sisters around. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Bob Zaney. Even therapy is just business. I was so depressed, I went to a therapist. They said, treat each day like it was your last. So I stiffed them. And this year's viewer choice favorite is Craig Shoemaker. Wow, this is incredible. Um, I'd like to uh, thank the people that I've worked with, but I was thinking of thanking the people I'd like to work with. So I'd like to thank uh, Rob Reiner, Steven Spielberg, uh, <laughs> Marty Scorsese, Don Knotts, actually. I got to meet him, and it was, he's like my idol. I don't know if he's here tonight, but uh, they pose us next to each other, so I'm like doing the old, all right, all right. <laughs> he's like old now. He's like, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> But this is really great. I, I, I want to uh, thank all the people that really did help me uh, get this. Um, my manager, Alan David, and uh, my publicist, Anna Marlia, my agent, Ritz Super, and of course, the people out there that voted um, on the internet, which I know nothing about. I'm on the information super cul-de-sac. That's where I am. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank the people, really, for voting and, uh, and, uh, and getting it, you know? So uh, we'll see you in the clubs. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Stay tuned for Goldie Hawn, Brooke Shields, and Monty Python's Eric Idle. Ice cream! Come on, ice cream for everyone! Oh, none for me, thanks. Why? Dairy foods do a number on my stomach. You lactose intolerant? Huh? You know, gas, bloating. I get it too, but it's no problem anymore. Try this. Introducing Lactate Ultra. One little caplet just before eating lets you digest dairy foods easily and naturally. Next time, let's go for milkshakes. With a little Lactate Ultra on the side. New Lactate Ultra. Go on, enjoy dairy again. Call 1-888-ULTRA now for a free sample. That is my son. Mimi! Walk it, tip it. Walk it, tip it. Too wild. Crazy. Feed my tika. What's my tika? Ah! To handle. Open this door right now! Tim Allen. Ah! Disney's Jungle to Jungle. Ah! Rated PG. Starts Friday, March 14th at a theater near you. Germs lurk in dark places where your toothbrush and floss may not reach. And when they pounce, gingivitis. But Listerine finds them. It's clinically proven to help prevent gingivitis. Germs can't hide from the power of prevention. Listerine. Some sinus medicines can make sensitive nasal tissue feel dry and uncomfortable. But Sudafed non-drying sinus has a moisturizing formula that helps keep nasal tissue feeling comfortable while it drains away sinus pressure. Take Sudafed non-drying sinus. Oh, my God.
you told us you wanted a truck with more playful performance. So for the all-new Dodge Dakota, our engineers matched quick ratio steering with a precision-tuned suspension, making it a blast to drive. Now, when Dakota responds precisely to your input, you'll know it's because we did too. The new Dodge Dakota. It's full of surprises. I had a dream last night. I dreamt I saw a cowboy living in the Stone Age while a man kissed a woman and all around the earth shook. Was it a dream? Or just the ABC Movie Marathon, a four-night dream team of unforgettable stars and movies. Unforgiven on Thursday, the Flintstones Network premiere on Friday, the Bodyguard on Saturday, and on Sunday, a world premiere, Volcano Fire on the Mountain. The ABC Movie Marathon, it's a dream come true. The 11th Annual American Comedy Awards will continue in a moment here on ABC. A Diane Sawyer exclusive, Mark Furman returns with new information on that fatal night. If you thought he was controversial then, wait till you hear him now. Primetime, ABC Wednesday. At Plymouth, we don't mean to brag, but Plymouth Voyagers received a lot of awards lately. And during the Plymouth Awards sale, you can get Plymouth Voyager plus air and seven passenger seating at no extra charge. All for this low price. Or check out the award-winning Plymouth Breeze for this low price. And the always popular Plymouth Neon Espresso comes with this great price. Come see what all the noise is about during the Plymouth Awards sale. Only at your Plymouth dealer. It's a fully loaded citrus soda with carbos. Feed the rush. Making sure your child's car seat is safe tonight at 10. Ladies and gentlemen, the star of Suddenly Susan, Ms. Brooke Shields. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is such a thrill for me to be here at the 11th Annual American Comedy Awards. Now, I'm here because I'm on a comedy show. And I've got to tell you, I'm having the most fun that I've ever had in my life. Uh, uh, I, I, was, um, I was really nervous, you know, when they asked me to appear this evening because, well, actually, I'm, I'm in awe of all you wonderful and, and talented and, 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 and funny people. Uh, you know, but they said, hey, don't, don't worry about it, you know. Don't try to be, be funny. Just, uh, just be yourself, you know, and, and um, wear, wear, wear something classy and, um, you know, not trashy. Uh, wear, wear flats and try to smile a lot and relax. Um, and, and whatever you do, don't, uh, don't sacrifice your dignity. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to pander for a laugh. No. Whatever you do, don't stoop to doing cheap physical shtick. Just think on your feet and try to have a good time. <laughs> the comedian's favorites for funniest supporting male performer in a television series are from Seinfeld, Jason Alexander. Oh, uh, just once. No, no, I hate the kind of. Why? I can never get the package open in time. Well, you just tear it open. It's not that easy. It's like beat the clock. There's a lot of pressure there. From Frazier, David Hyde Pierce. What was your dream, Frazier? Oh, all right. Starts out in a CD motel room. 
I'm naked. Interesting. Yes, yeah, and uh, then the shower turns off. And out from the bathroom steps a man. All right, go ahead. Let me have it. Are you saying that now, or is that a quote from the dream? <laughs> from Seinfeld, Michael Richards. Uh, they're making faces at me because I've had a couple of cafe lattes, but I'm entitled to them. I can have as many cafe lattes as I want. That was the settlement. You've got to stop it. You're, you're all hopped up on the caffeine. Well, I feel like I'm talking a little faster, but it's very hard to tell. From the Larry Sanders show, Jeffrey Tambor. Why the mezuzah? Why this? Oh, well, this. Well, this is called the high, yeah. and it's a Hebrew symbol for, for life. life. Yes, I know what it is. When did you become one of the chosen people? Well, actually, this weekend. From the Larry Sanders show, Rip Torn. Is her girlfriend coming too? Oh, for God's sakes, how come every time you see two women together, you automatically think they're gay? Oh, come on, Larry. What? What? So... We're together? Does that mean we're gay? No, but the night's still young. It's my birthday. And the award goes to... <laughs> David Hyde Pierce in Frasier. Hello, thank you. I, I first of all want to say how sorry I am. I couldn't no, be there with you. I'm not thinking tonight. it might be a Texas uh, thing. I don't know. Win an American Whatever Comedy is. Award so is, me, is, me, is a great honor. Thank it's you all for, you for, do. for voting you for me. I want to acknowledge my fellow nominees, Jason, Michael, and Rip, and Jeffrey. I also especially, of course, want to thank our writers who do such an incredible job, not only of creating a great character, but of sustaining a I don't care about Jerry Seinfeld. Of course, used to work on a show. A high quality of writing through many years. And I, of course, not only thank the writers, but our producers and our, our crew as well. So, of course, I want to thank my family and friends. And, of course, also the cast. Well, fine. It's a dress to have a silly thing to see, though. Please welcome the delightful young stars of Jerry Maguire and One Fine Day, Jonathan Lipnicki and Mae Whitman. Who is that tubby? The human head weighs eight pounds. My mom says that some of the heads here tonight weigh more. The American Comedy Awards weighs 18 pounds. So that means that one of these is better than two heads. Because two heads weighs 16 pounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, can we get rid of this thing? OK. Who wants it? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. First, the nominees. In the category of funniest female guest appearance in a TV series, the favorites are from Mad About You, Carol Burnett. Oh, I'm sorry, Paul. I apologize. I think a person ought to be able to get up and go to the bathroom like a person. It's OK, really. It's not a problem. In the army, we were taught to hold it. <laughs> well, this is peacetime. From the Larry Sanders Show, Ellen DeGeneres. I don't own a TV, so. You don't own it. Now, why don't you own a TV? It, it influences me too much in my work. I uh, recently caught a, an old Cosby rerun, and suddenly my character's a black 50-year-old gynecologist. And I just, <laughs> From Seinfeld, Janine Garofalo. Bowl of car flakes. More cereal? That's your third bowl today? You had it for breakfast and lunch. Hey, so what's the deal with brunch? I mean, if it's a combination of breakfast and lunch, how come there's no leper or no liner? <laughs> From Friends, Brooke Shields. Oh, Drake, you are so talented. Let me see those hands. Oh, these hands, these beautiful hands. <laughs> oh, I could just eat them, but I won't. From Suddenly Susan, Betty White. Mitch Haber was convicted of perjury with intent to defraud and was sentenced to 500 hours of community service at the Millican Avenue Daycare Center. <laughs>
hands of an older woman? <laughs> well, think about it. <laughs> Do I get all three? <laughs> Stay here. Oh, thank you so very much. This is, uh, it, it, oh boy. I think one of the greatest things that in life is to be able to earn a living doing what you love and to get a prize for it is the icing on the cake. I would, I thank you so much, the folks who voted, and also I would like, I want to thank all the gang on Mad About You, certainly Helen and Paul. They held me back a little. Thank you so very much. Next, Princess Leia, Phil Hartman, and some half-naked men, so don't go away. Hi, honey. Hey, how was your checkup? It's fine. Really? Yeah, the heart's good. And your cholesterol? Good. You know, the doctor said the healthy diet is paying off. See? You better keep eating those Cheerios. The FDA says that whole grain oat soluble fiber as part of a diet low in saturated fat and cholesterol may reduce the risk of heart disease. And Cheerios is the number one ready to eat whole grain oat cereal. I always knew you had a good heart. You do? Mm -hmm. That's why I married you. I thought you married me because I was good looking. The one and only Cheerios. I picked up this dime and suddenly everything was going my way. My train showed up right when I wanted it. A woman was saving me a seat. And with one snap, the local turned express. At home was the most amazing thing. There was Candace Burden with a phone bill that made sense. Just passing through. Thanks to Sprint Sense, the dime a minute rate, I knew exactly what every call cost. As we hopped a plane for Vegas, I passed the dime on. Why should I be the only one with a phone bill that makes sense? People call you guys bunny spotters, is that right? Bunny spotters. I think that it trivializes what we do. It's much larger than that. I mean, once you've seen it, you can never right go back. There's no other pink like that. He's been through here. Bum, bum, you see anything yet? Bum, bum, you bum, bum. I've seen it 16 right, times. Right. It to watch somebody find it, see it for the first time. Ooh. I feel very fortunate to be here, because you know when we're all gone, I'm still going to be out there. It's a touch and embrace. It's a hand, it's a face. It's a vino lotion with oatmeal. It's a friend, it's a hug. For skin that simply must be touched, a vino lotion is made with oatmeal to hold moisture inside. For skin so noticeable, it's irresistible. It's a feel, it's a, feel. It's a, touch. It's a touch, it's a vino. I don't fool around with things that come and go, so I only use fade resistant preference by L'Oreal. Preference has patented stay true colorants, so the color I love holds on, stays true. I can sun, swim, do just about anything. No brassiness, no dryness, just soft, silky hair. Fade resistant preference by L'Oreal. They don't fool around, and neither do I. After all, I'm worth it. The good news is Little Caesar's pizza by the foot is big. Guess what? The new pizza by the foot's so big, there's something for everybody in here. All right, let's eat. Little Caesars Pizza by the Foot with Stromboli. Nearly three feet of pizza with your favorite topping on each section at nearly a foot of our new Stromboli fold-over pizza. Just $10.99 carried out. Pizza, pizza. Wednesday's a blast! It's the moment America's waited for. Nadine's giving birth. Everything okay down there? Shh, she's on a break. Then a pitcher's got him under siege. Will they make it? I've never gone this long without eating. It's been 20 minutes. Well, seems like half an hour. It's an all-new coach. Then it's an amazing episode. Drew's gone on a hunger strike. He's fading away. So's the sun, but I bet it gets there first. Then Ellen's on a spiritual retreat. Hello, everyone. No, A new Ellen ABC Wednesday. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Phil Hartman. Thank you. 
You folks at home can also find fame and fortune in the field of comedy, even if you're as disturbed as the people you've seen on this stage tonight. It's easy to be funny. All you do is... I've been asked to move this along, so let's get right to the love theme from Deliverance. My banjo, please. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, Las Vegas, Nevada, two asteroids collided and a star was born. Her name is Carrie Fisher, and she's here to present this year's Lifetime Achievement Award. Debbie Reynolds has been like a mother to me. <laughs> I feel like I've known her all my life. But when I saw her in the film Mother, I saw a side of her I'm proud to say I've never seen before. Not just because I didn't have to eat antique cheese and bad ice cream, but because I feel privileged to be even remotely the child of the woman who with Albert Brooks's wonderful words and guidance created this remarkable performance. But it wasn't enough that I admired her performance in this film, not to mention on stage in over 50 films in her life. It seemed now she was getting not only the reviews of a lifetime, but nominations and yet another star on the Walk of Fame. All she needs now is one more star to make up for her three horrendous marriages. No, it appears that my mother is a film star again, and I was in danger of disappearing into her ample shadow. So I did something drastic. I called George Lucas and asked him to re-release the Star Wars trilogy. And as he is such a good friend, he understood my plight. And so I've managed not to disappear entirely in the wake of this wonderful, talented woman on whose dust I am proud to dine. People have asked me if I knew she had this in her. Having been in her myself at some point, I can say with real confidence, you ain't seen nothing yet. So it is with great pride and it is my honor to present to a woman who has come through it all and as you can see not only is still standing but acting dancing singing and giving me makeup and fashion tips for all she's worth so in the words of my ex-husband paul simon here's to you mrs henderson it was her performance in singing in the rain that made debbie reynolds a big name in movies
Debbie had become everyone's childhood sweetheart, and with boundless energy and a great talent for musical comedy, she went on to star in some 50 films along with TV shows and Broadway. Hi, Debbie. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. We're going to the promised land. In the 70s, Debbie moved to Las Vegas to perform for a loyal crowd of admirers at her own hotel, casino, and show business museum. Then fate knocked on her door in the name of Albert Brooks, and he said, I think you're my mother. Well, I don't tell you everything. It's not that important. Not that important? Gee, Mother, I would think a man that you're intimate with is pretty important. Dear, we're not intimate. We just have sex occasionally. Oh. I mean, oh. You know, it's 27 years since I made a feature film, and this is such a wonderful role that I'm really grateful to Albert to give me this part so I can be a working actress again. I didn't pick out Debbie Reynolds because I wanted her to have a comeback. I truly felt in my soul she could play this part better than any human being living on the planet. In 64, she was the unsinkable Molly Brown. Look at anybody say I'm down. Look, I'm blinking. <laughs> Now, at 64, she's the unsinkable Debbie Reynolds. The unsinkable Molly Brown, you know. I'm gonna learn to read and write. I'm gonna see what there is to see. I ain't down yet. Recently, Debbie received a second star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame because Mom always did like having two of everything. <laughs> Mama. I really am uh, overwhelmed and I'm delighted to receive this Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> I'm just glad I lived long enough to uh, accept it. <laughs> of course, for me, uh, just getting through life has always been an achievement. <laughs> Some of you that are older realize what I mean. It's always been my feeling, you know, that humor will get you through almost everything. Um, I've had three side-splitting marriages. <laughs> First, oh my papa, oh my faux pas. <laughs> she wrote it and I screwed it up. <laughs> There's the shoe man, of course, and then, well, I haven't figured out the third one yet, but that one's ended too. But looking back at life, it's sort of a humorous way, you know, you have to have humor about it. There's all kinds of humors, farce humor, um, gallows humor, I think that they call it, but no one in my life was actually hung, which <laughs> brings me to Albert Brooks. <laughs> a man who was truly endowed with creative talent. She wrote that one too, Albert. <laughs> and wit. I want to thank you for the wonderful role that you were so believing in me to give me. It's just a great part. And I'm, you know, I like to thank you for letting me reveal my shy and controlling side. For 20 years, I was known as Tammy, the girl next door, and then uh, uh, for the next 20 uh, more years, I was known as Princess Leia's mother. And now, I finally get my own identity back, and a week later, they re release Star Wars. <laughs> Thank you, George. Uh, it's enough with the Force. So, <laughs> 40 years ago, it just seems like yesterday, I think it was 48, L.B. Mayer called me into his office and he said, Debbie, uh, you're going to star in Singing in the Rain. And it never entered my mind that one day I'd be considered a distinguished film actress like Courtly Love. <laughs> she
she wrote that too. <laughs> Now, but if by coming here, and I want to accept this Lifetime Achievement Award, if by my coming here just gets one more person in my hotel in Vegas, I'll be very grateful. <laughs> Drop by anytime. Thank you. from the American Comedy Awards, politically incorrect Bill Maher and Goldie Hawn. Our engineers gave it the largest interior in its class. They made room for the biggest engine available and specified the longest wheelbase. Then they added one more surprise, the taut, precise steering feel of a sport sedan. So when Sport Truck Magazine named the new Dodge Dakota Sport Truck of the Year, we were honored, but not surprised. The new Dodge Dakota. It's full of surprises. Chew on this. Nearly seven out of ten of us usually don't brush after lunch, especially lunches on the run. Now, chew on this. Chewing Trident after meals can actually help you fight cavities. So when you can't brush, chew on this. Trident. Hey, how you doing? I'm that new sponge who's trying to look like a scotch Bright scrub sponge. <laughs> Oof. Everyone wants to be a Scotch-Brite scrub sponge, but they can't be because Scotch-Brite scours over 50% faster than any impersonator. Thank you. Get, Get the everybody. scour power of Scotch-Brite. Next Monday on ABC, happy birthday, Elizabeth, a celebration of life. The 11th Annual American Comedy Awards will continue in a moment here on ABC. For a limited time only, at your Chrysler dealer. You can get $1,000 cash back on Chrysler Cirrus. Or lease Chrysler LHS for just $3.59 a month. Or get $1,500 cash back on the Chrysler Concord LXI. For a limited time only, at your Chrysler dealer. What's new in your world? responsible for feeding people. People from Seattle to Sri Lanka. An easy enough job. As long as the weather doesn't get too extreme, <laughs> sex don't ruin my crop. You know, you gotta have reliable tools like Counter CR. Last long, lock and load, it's safer to you. I count on it, because it's my responsibility to deliver. You knew Nissan trucks were tough and rugged, but wait! What would you say if they also came with air conditioning, an AM FM cassette stereo, and alloy wheels for no extra charge? We couldn't have put it better ourselves. Now get $1,000 customer cash back on any new Nissan truck. Call for the WHOI Paradise winning forecast. Please welcome the host of Politically Incorrect, Mr. Bill Maher. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. It's a, a great honor to be here. Uh, no, truly the... The American Comedy Awards have always been close to my heart, but then again, so is my colon. <laughs> 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 
watching some of these people up here. You know, I really envy the people in uh, sitcoms and wacky movies. They have all these crazy characters around them. Uh, I mean, I love doing Politically Incorrect, but just once I'd like to see the president of the ACLU make a Kramer entrance and plow into the table. <laughs> if you can imagine such a thing. And apparently you can't. You know, I think a lot of people... I think a lot of people take comedy for granted. What a tragedy, ladies and gentlemen. You shouldn't take it for granted. Sure, it's impressive to watch Meryl Streep cry on cue or Dustin Hoffman lose himself in a role, but can either one of them sell a joke about airline food? <laughs> well, I'm here tonight to present the award for funniest female performer in a television series, a trophy I was honored to take home last year. The favorites are from Third Rock from the Sun. Jack, Mary, 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 oh. Mary. Oh, no, that's more like it. Oh, I want you so bad. Oh, you've got to escape. You want me to try and get away? You must. Oh, let me go, let me go. Not that. From Ellen, Ellen DeGeneres. Biscotti? No, thank you. Now you want one? From the nanny, Fran Drescher. I saw that now fall. From Mad About You, Helen Hunt. You looking for an onion bagel? Huh? Oh, whatever. I ate it. That's okay. I ate two of them. It's fine. Three, three and a half. I ate three and a half onion bagels. Is that a problem? It's really not. You know, I'm pregnant. I understand. <laughs> okay, Jimmy, you... From the Rosie O'Donnell Show, Rosie oh, O'Donnell. Okay. Are you Rosie O'Donnell for the TV? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes, I am. Please, um, I just want to say <laughs> that I like Tom Cruise, too. <laughs> From Tracy Takes On, Tracy Ullman. Actually, this isn't my baby. What I mean is I'm not its mother. I'm actually its big sister. I'm a volunteer for the Big Sisters charity. I get to do the maternal cross-cultural thing on a limited basis. And this year's favorite is... Oh, my God, Rosie O'Donnell and the Rosie O'Donnell Show! People who are here, my God. It's a very big honor for me. Lucy and Ethel, Mary and Rhoda, Laverne and Shirley, Roseanne and Jackie, all the women who made me laugh growing up. Carol Burnett, Barbara Streisand, Bette Midler, Jean Stapleton, Betty White, the list goes on and on. This is all for you. And to any little kid who's out there watching, you gotta believe it to live it. So believe your dreams, because they come true. Mine sure did. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Eric Idle. Good evening. My name is Eric Idle. Uh, it's my real name. Thank you. For those of you who may remember Monty Python's Flying Circus, I was the funny one. <laughs> At any rate, I'm here to present the award for the funniest male in a TV series. Uh, why you should reward the sad misfits who do comedy, I haven't a clue. <laughs> These are very sick people, and they need help and treatment, care and love. I suppose giving them a worthless statuette and a chance to thank their agents on TV is not such a bad thing. But I don't think we should really encourage a lot of this. <laughs> I should really have won this award. Apparently, the best I can hope for is the opportunity to present one of these awards to some other lucky sod. So, scan consolation, but I mustn't act up, or there may be trouble with my green card. So, for male performer in a television series, the favorites are... Listen to me, listen, listen From Home up, Improvement, listen, listen Tim Allen. Sex is, um... It's like a car. The best idea is to keep the car in the garage for a long, long, long time. When that garage door opens, 
you got to think car cover. From the Drew Carey show, Drew Carey. Mimi, what happened to you? None of your beeswax, pinhead. I'm trying to show some concern. Obviously, you injured one of your hind legs. From Frasier, Kelsey Grammer. You know, I really do love listening to your show. I think it's because you have such a soothing voice. What a very kind thing to say. From Third Rock from the Sun, John Lithgow. <laughs> Dick, I need a favor. Uh, I'm not now, Tommy. I'm doing research. I'm finding out what happens when the spit hits the fan. From the Larry Sanders Show, Gary Shandling. Just because I'm famous, I gotta take this kind of crap, and then I can't do anything. At least if I was a regular guy, I walked into a bar and some guy says you're puffy and there's neediness written all over your face, I can take him outside. And do what? And I am speaking hypothetically. And this year's favorite is John Lisko in Third Rock from the Sun. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to receive this from you, Eric. Great idol of mine. <laughs> I'm very honored and thrilled and uh, absolutely astonished to win this award. A year ago, if you had seen my name on a list with the other four splendid men in this category, you would have said, oh, right, Lithgow, he's the unfunny one. And you would have been right. Uh, I have the feeling that the joke is on me, that people are finding me funny nowadays, because in the past I've always taken myself so damn seriously. I think that Third Rock from the Sun is kind of my banana peel. It's the occasion of my, the big comic pratfall in my career. I'll never be dignified again. And frankly, I couldn't be happier. I'm, uh, I am funny on Third Rock from the Sun because the character is wonderful. The premise is loopy. Jane Curtin, Kristen Johnston, French Stewart, Joey Gordon Levitt make me funny, especially Bonnie and Terry Turner and about 12 hilarious, genuinely funny writers make me funny. These people have won me this award. I share it with them. I thank them. I thank all of you. Uh, I really don't deserve it, but I have no intention of giving it back. <laughs> thank you so much. Goldie Hawn and Third Rock's Jane Curtin are both reunited with past co-stars. Find out who right after this. I wish that for just one day Dad couldn't tell a lie. Is it good for you? I've had better. In the next 24 hours, Fletcher Reed will have to tell the truth, even if it kills him. I can't lie! From Imagine Entertainment... What's that, Fletcher? Your cholesterol! ...and the director of The Nutty Professor... Like the new jazz? Whatever it takes to focus off your head. Jim Carrey... Everybody's been real nice. Well, it's because you have big... Liar, Liar. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, March 21st. If it's happened once, it's happened a hundred times. We go out for dinner and Robert orders the shrimp scampi. Then he wakes up in the middle of the night with the worst heartburn. Then I'm up while he fumbles for his tongues. Well, tonight, he finally tried my Pepsi AC. Just one lasts all night. No heartburn, no tongues. See? He's sleeping like a baby. I don't think he misses the heartburn a bit, do you? You can sleep heartburn free with Pepsi AC. I bet he was a cute kid. Cute? I was adorable. And I'll bet your mother made you popcorn mm -hmm. on a stove with real melted butter. She knew what I liked. Like that new pop secret made with real butter. I love my mother. Didn't your mother teach you how to share? Now there's a pop secret made with real butter. And not just any butter, real Land O'Lakes butter. By the way, I'm still cute. Not that cute. Pop secret popcorn. So good, it's one secret no one wants to share. Give me the popcorn.
Now for our annual report. Recent mergers have been fruitful. New product development is up and growing. Florida's natural premium brand, not from concentrate juice, is made by a co-op of growers. They own the land, they own the trees, they own the company. So unlike those big juice companies, we have a different idea about diversification. Try some grower style. Florida's natural premium brand, grower style, with the most juicy bits of orange, taste the difference. The way some people drive these days sure makes you want to talk to an Allstate agent. He can help you figure out how much protection you really need. Being in good hands is the only place to be. When ABC asked me to return to TV, I said, what do you have in mind? Somebody suggested a Western. Oh! They said, how about a cop show? Oh, hey, police! Don't make me take this! Stop! Oh, 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 oh. A medical show? Oh, okay. Sherry, help me, please. We got problems, guys. <laughs> Yo, man, put that back. <laughs> then somebody said, how about doing something with Vivica A. Fox? I said, now that I can do. Now that I know you want to be alone, we can be alone together. Fine. Did you hand me my magazine? No, you're entitled to read any and all magazines on your side of the bed. Arsenio premieres two weeks from Wednesday on ABC. And I have always thought of him as my lucky charm. And I will treasure him forever. Walter Matthau is truly one of the funniest actors ever to appear on stage, on television, and on the screen. After a successful career on Broadway, always cast as the heavy, Walter was hired for his first comedy movie, Who's Got the Action, with Nita Talbot. Well, I ain't suggesting anything. Ow! But like it would help if we were married. Well, listen, honey. I'm a guy who deals in numbers and averages. My whole life I spend trying to beat the price. The day that marriage becomes a good bet, I get in touch with you. Keep rubbing. He won an Oscar for his scheming lawyer role in The Fortune Cookie, and a Tony Award for his portrayal of Oscar Madison in The Odd Couple, which was later made into a successful movie version with Jack Lemmon. Oscar, what is it? Is it the cooking or the cleaning, the crying? I'll tell you exactly what it is. The cooking, the cleaning, the crying. It's the talking in your sleep. It's those moose calls that open your ears at 2 o'clock in the morning. Hey, did you see that? He just... I first met Walter when we did Cactus Flower together. I didn't know dentists made house calls. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Knew what? That you wouldn't do it. A whole day full of appointments, a dozen patients coming, and you send a letter that you're going to kill yourself, and then don't. Well, sorry to disappoint you. Well, the whole thing was a fake, wasn't it? Everything between us is a fake, Julian. Just because I broke one lousy little date last night, it happens that I had a very important meeting with an Australian dentist. We were comparing techniques. Don't try to spare my feelings, Julian. I know you were out with your wife. Well, if you know, you know. After that, Walter went on to make over 62 feature films, giving the many incredible faces of characters we've come to enjoy and love. Hello? Is that my daughter? Will you shut up? Is that my daughter? Will you keep quiet? Can't you see I'm talking? Don't you see me on the phone with a person? For God's sake, will you behave like a human being for five seconds? For five seconds, behave like a human being! Hello? Just a minute. Your daughter. Ooh, Walter's most daughter. recent films are friend. The Grass Harp and I'm Not Rappaport. When was the last time you made love to a woman? Listen to him. More nostalgia. My poor schmeckle talking nostalgia. It comes up once a year like Groundhog Day. Last time, 
was July 10th, 1981. Was your wife still alive? I certainly hope so. Walter Matthau, a lifetime of comedy and no end in sight. I'm going to ask you to come on up here, Walter, and take this. The other day, I was doing a salutation on camera for Neil Simon, who's getting a Distinguished Achievement Award someplace in uh, Kansas. I asked the director, I said, why is he getting a Distinguished Achievement Award? Why not a Lifetime Achievement Award? And he said, well, there was another playwright. This, this, they gave awards to playwrights. There was another playwright, Edward Albee, who said he wouldn't accept a Lifetime Achievement Award because it sounds so terminal. <laughs> so actually, I'm thinking the same thing. <laughs> it's a little scary. And I thought about... Uh, Distinguished Achievement Award, but that sounded a bit pompous. <laughs> Illustrious Achievement Award, renowned, prominent achievement, they all sounded pretentious. And then I came up with something, I'd like to know what you think about it. Award for good luck in a few successful comedies. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kathy Griffin. Stand and perch. Just like the drag queen stopped me. All right. Um, this night is very exciting for me. By day, I'm the wisecracking best friend on Suddenly Susan. By night, a Hollywood hucker. No! That's Avenging Angel. Anyway, by night, um, I'm a stand-up comic. And now here I am following Walter Matthau and Goldie Hawn. It's like I always imagined it would be. You see, normally at night, I'm doing stand-up in one of the alternative comedy venues, the coffee houses, bookstores, lesbian candle shops. I might go to the bathroom and stare at myself in the mirror, wipe away the phone number from Planned Parenthood and written in lipstick, and just say, damn it, someday this will all be a chapter in a best-selling book or a miniseries based on my life. On Lifetime, television for women. I will be played by Reese Witherspoon. But I digress. Uh, I can't tell you all of my dreams because we're not on cable. All right, um, but I can't tell you how excited I am to be here tonight. Book ended by legends. First the reunion of Walter and Goldie, and now the reunion of a couple who haven't worked together or maybe even seen each other in, well, I don't even want to guess how many years because it might just tick them off. When they started out together, they weren't ready for prime time, but fortunately for us, tonight they are. From the Shrine, it's Jane Curtin and Chevy Chase. <laughs> Good to see you again. Good to see you too. 
No, no, seriously, I'm really happy to be with Jane again. Uh, I've really missed her. I know. And uh, things are going so well. Jane's in another hit television show, and I have a new hit, which is a movie, of course, and opened last week. I know. Can I see it on the eastbound or the westbound flight? <laughs> Whichever direction your broom is pointing, I guess, Jane. <laughs> No, actually, I know everything about Chevy's career, and I followed it very closely. Really? Mm-hmm. First the Inquirer, then the Star. Don't forget the Globe. No, I can't. <laughs> I'm very pleased with Jane's success. I love Third Rock from the Sun. I even went to see her movie, The Coneheads, the day after it opened. Couldn't get in. Was it full? It was close. <laughs> For funniest supporting female performer in a television series, from Sybil Christine Baranski. Do you think we'll ever fall in love like that again? Head over heels? No, I think the best we can hope for is heels over head. <laughs> from Third Route from the Sun, Kristen Johnston. I tasted your butter cookies, Mrs. Stevenson, and yes, I can believe it's not butter. <laughs> Use a butter substitute and you'll find yourself saying, I can't believe I was bounced out of this bake sale right out of my ass. <laughs> Get the program. From Friends, Lisa Kudrow. You believe that's how we spent our two weeks together? I know, we didn't do any of the romantic things I had planned, like having a picnic in Central Park and, you know, a coffee at Central Park. Oh, I just got that. Oh. <laughs> From Seinfeld, Julia Louis-Dreyfus. <laughs> Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Thank you very much for giving me this fabulous comedy award this year. I'm delighted to have it, and I'm very sorry I can't be with all you fabulous people at the Shrine, but instead I'm here on this cruddy coffee shop set waiting for um, <clears throat> one of the other idiots on this show to show up. So. Um, no one's here. It's a gigantic waste of my time sitting around here waiting. I'm sorry I'm not there. I really am. But maybe if no one shows up in the next 15, I might uh, see you at the after party. But thanks a million. This is a good show to work on. This is a great award to have. Thank you very much. Still to come, Billy Crystal, Jamie Foxx, and Roseanne. Dear Mom, camp is rough. Being out in the wild sure makes a kid hungry. But the sandwiches we got just aren't enough. It makes me homesick for you and a hot bowl of Campbell's tomato soup. Nothing turns an ordinary sandwich into a hot, satisfying meal like rich, wholesome Campbell's tomato soup. Mom? I brought you something for those sandwiches. Wow, tomato soup. You're the best, Mom. Campbell's makes everything. Mm -hmm. and 32 horsepower, 16 valve, overhead cam, four wheel, independent suspension, cab forward, gnarly Dodge Neon Coupe. Dude. Say hello to Neon with $1,000 cash savings at your friendly Dodge dealer. This winter, the powder's packed and ready to blow. Volcano Fire on the Mountain, ABC Sunday. The 11th Annual American Comedy Awards will continue in a moment here on ABC. His body's a weapon. And hers isn't bad either. Meet Max London and Lorne Cash. They're spies. Why don't you reach into my pants? I've got a gun. That's original. Together, they can penetrate the world's top secret organizations. These are very dangerous people. Overthrow ruthless dictators. Drop it! Shoot him! Even divert a nuclear war. That's impossible. Well, so is Kenny G's career. Spy Game. Wanna play? Premiering on ABC Monday in two. 
Is your baby's car seat safe? The federal government doesn't think so. I'm Mike Costa, and we'll have that story coming up. It's not from outer space. It's the newest way to test your body fat. Marjorie Vincent shows us the Bod Pod, tonight on HOI News at 10. Brought to you by the Metro Center. All That Matters Christian Bookstore is exceptional and inspirational. Always the best for you. In the Metro Center, University at Glen in Peoria. It's a rare find. It's adorned with distinctive features. And it's offered at a most collectible price. The Accord Special Edition. But like anything this coveted, now you see it. Soon you won't. Hello, Heart of Illinois. When you wake up tomorrow, get the latest news, weather, and sports on Good Morning HOI. Now at 5.30 followed by Good Morning America at 7. Credit problems, slow pay, repossession, bankruptcy? At Art Hustler Auto Plaza, we have a special finance plan called the Fresh Start Program. All you need is a reasonable down payment and a job. No, three inches, I swear to God. Uh, Roseanne? No. Excuse yeah. me, Miss Roseanne. Uh, I'm busy. Um, yeah. No, I just need to take you over in the big room. They want you in the big room with all the hobnobbers and the gong gooslers. Personally, I hate to bug you about it, you know, but I got all these voices rambling in my head saying, do this, do that. I don't even remember where the hell I left my parents. I was supposed to pick them up at the airport. Then I come here thinking I'm going to get new Country Artist of the Year award. Then they stick a headset and a staff thing on me. And you know what? I just want to say I love your show. Nine years. My God. Ooh, and then you hit the lottery, man, how much cabbage can one person get in a lifetime? That's a beautiful thing, and you know what you gotta do, though, to keep it all together? You gotta take some time out, maybe make a sandwich for a hippie. You know, they need sandwiches, or maybe just stop in the morning, kneel down, and say, well, good day to you, too, Mr. Otter. Anyhow, it's none of my concern. I'm not even here. I'm made out of rubber, and I'm from the future. <laughs> You know, under different circumstances, maybe at another time, another place, I would have married that guy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jamie Foxx. Good evening. I'm here to present the award for the funniest male in the TV special. Now, I think it should have went to Dennis Rodman. <laughs> However, Dennis wasn't nominated in that category. He was nominated for the funniest female in a TV special for kicking a photographer where he just shouldn't have been kicked. And uh, that's, I guess that's what they call in the NBA, a loose ball foul. <laughs> and uh, Mike Tyson. Now, the fight wasn't funny. The fight was a serious fight, but uh, Mike, Mike is not here, right? Cool. I'll go ahead and say this. Uh, my, the, the fight wasn't funny, but Evander Holyfield hit Mike Tyson so hard, it made him the nicest guy in the world. Did you see that? First of all, I'd just like to thank you for just, you know, being yourself, Evander. It's just, uh, you know, it's just nice. And just, can I just say that you're, you're pretty attractive? <laughs> Let's get to the real nominees. The category of the funniest performer in a television special, the comedians selected are from George Carlin, back in town, George Carlin. Here's another question I have. How come when it's us, it's an abortion, and when it's a chicken, it's an omelet? From 50th Annual Tony Awards, Nathan Lane. With the Phantom's permission, we're going to let another opera take center stage right now. The brand new 1996 version of La Boheme, complete with sex, drugs, and transvestites. All the things we know Puccini adored. <laughs> From Late Show with David Letterman, video special okay, to David Letterman. Yeah. Well, I wanted to show you a couple of the moves that I'm going to do in the water. <laughs> All right. We bring our legs up. All right. And then we spread them just a little bit like this. And then, uh, oh! From politically incorrect convention uh, coverage, George Bill Maher. Second night, and the convention is going very well. You have to say that for the Republicans. Last night, my God, everyone was crying. But then they cheered right back up when they showed the Rodney King video. Everybody. <laughs> 
from Comic Relief 10th Anniversary, Robin Williams. They can. Remember the last temptation of Christ? There were people outside with signs going, this movie is not real. Come here, Sparky. No movie's real. <laughs> and this year's favorite is George Carlin and George Carlin back in town. Hey, I don't want your award. Keep your lousy award. Why don't you take your award and stick it up your... Wait a minute. That's my Oscar speech. <laughs> Oscars, Tony, Emmy, Grammy. What is this one again? American Comedy Awards. I don't have a speech for that. I know what I'll do. Just a couple of general thank yous, is that okay? My uncles, I love them. They were responsible for a lot of my success. Uncle Lucifer had 23 separate and distinct personalities. Unfortunately, all of them were unpleasant. <laughs> also, Uncle Tonto, his hobby was picking through airliner wreckage looking for dolls. <laughs> Uncle Shemp, Uncle Shemp sold his soul when he was a young man. Unfortunately, he sold it to Jerry Van Dyke and he got nothing in return. <laughs> Uncle Dagwood was killed recently. Unfortunately, he died having rough sex with a Norwegian sailor in a barca lounger. <laughs> also, Uncle Irene. Irene's an odd name, isn't it, for an uncle. He fought in Germany, Italy, and North Africa. Unfortunately, that was just last month, and he was arrested and jailed in all three countries. <laughs> and Estes. Uncle Estes. He went to the Schick Center and gave up shaving. He thought Irving Berlin was the Jewish section of Germany. <laughs> Believe it or not, he could make his cat have a bowel movement by aiming the TV remote control at the cat and pushing volume. Coming up, film personality Kathy Bates and multiple personality Jonathan Winter. Hey, Juwan, knock, knock. Who's there? Juwan. Juwan who? Juwan, go McDonald's and buy me six piece chicken McNuggets. It's only 99 cents. Knock, knock. Who's there? Scotty. Scotty who? Scotty be nine McNuggets for me. They're just 159. Great with America's favorite fries. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hill. Hill who? Hill buys 20 while they're just 2 99 yeah! McDonald's Chicken McNuggets, America's favorite way to dunk. The ultimate in digital movies and entertainment awaits you. It's unlike anything you've ever experienced. And it's only on the 18-inch digital satellite system. Let's play. This is U.S. Satellite Broadcasting. What a combination. Crunchy Werther's toffee and delicious milk chocolate. Mm. I keep one bag in the car, one on my desk, one in the living room, and one next to my bed. Now that's Werther's quality. Nothing but the best for my guests. It's going to be a nice evening. It's brand new. The crunchy kind of Werther's toffee in luscious milk chocolate. Werther's chocolates, the crunchy luxury. I start on them right after breakfast. <laughs> For, you know, aches and pains and fever, I take Tylenol. But for headaches, I take Excedrin. Because Excedrin relieves headaches better than Tylenol. How do I know that? Did I review the clinical research that proves it? No, not exactly. I had a headache. I tried Excedrin. It worked better. That's the only kind of research that matters to me. Excedrin, the headache medicine. Morning number three. Smoke-free. Nice going, Nicoderm CQ. Doing fine with no help, thanks. You want to cheat? No. Come on, just one. No. I hate how calm you are. That's the CQ. Only Nicoderm CQ puts the highest level of medicine in your system. A 24-hour stream that's still with you when you wake up. It helps calm the cravings. You'll see. Nicoderm CQ. The power to calm, the power to comfort, the power to quit successfully. Doug wants to know, will you marry him? Honey, if you won't, I will. Everywhere you look, guys are popping the question and way out ways. And after she gives us a big thumbs up, it's time to fly to Target! 
to register for gifts at Club Wet. Just scan in the stuff you want. Barbecue grills. Cozy bedding. Even stereo! And your register nationwide. Whatever you say. My, but you've trained him well. Club Wet, only at Target. Say yes to the things you want. ABC Late Night Tonight. On Nightline, they are anti-government groups, and if you oppose them, you could lose your car, your credit, your home. And on P.I., spirituality, love, and the adopted daughter. These are saintly qualities. Not right? within the family, Doc. Nightline and Politically Incorrect with Bill Maher. ABC Late Night Tonight. The Network Television premiere of The Flintstones, ABC Friday. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Meany. very much. Thank you very, very much. What's wrong with you people? Wearing the tight pants. It's not right. Please, calm down. Thank you very much. As you can see, I am a little upset. And you should be too. This whole thing, it makes me crazy. In the upper left-hand corner, they have the letters TV reminding you that you're watching television and not looking at your radio. All of this doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter at all, it's not right. Because there's so much stuff on the screen, you can't see what you're watching anyway. In addition to the notice that you're watching TV, down in the lower right-hand corner, it tells you what station you're watching. In the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a little CC telling you that you don't have to watch it at all because now you can read it. And across the bottom of the screen, they have a notice indicating that if you're really watching a nice family show now, you just wait until 11 o'clock. Then we're gonna show you the car crashes and the explosions and the murders and the riots. It's crazy out there, it's not right. And if there's room below that, they flash the sports scores and the latest prices for pork bellies. Eating pork bellies. God, look at the size of you. And at least 100 times a day, they put on the weather report telling you what's going on outside. But you're watching television inside. So what do you care what's going on outside? All of this stuff, plus the names of the people who work on the show, are squeezed onto side and they roll by so fast that you can't see them at all. But that's okay, that's all right. Because on the other side of the screen, they have a promo for what's coming up next that you're also not allowed to watch. How can you complain about what's on TV? You can't see it anyhow. So I've come up with a new invention. You see this? It's a light bulb. You screw it in a lamp and you turn it on and you try that new thing called reading. But you don't do that now. You know why? Because you are about to meet the brightest light ever to appear on TV. A true original, one of my favorites indeed. Please, let's give him a warm round of applause. The best in the business, Jonathan Winters! I always remember my mark. No, I don't always remember my mark. I remember there was a time that I was working years ago, and the woman, I, was, I won't mention her name because she was right. She said, he doesn't seem to be able to hit his mark. Very rich young girl, too. I could have struck her with this. <laughs> uh, but again, she was right. So they put a sandbag down there for me. Every year, the American Comedy Awards honors a writer, director, or producer for his or her contributions to the world of comedy. I mean, where would we be without them? They're the ones we blame when it doesn't go well. Tonight, we're blaming Rob Reiner, a multi-talented creator who really deserves this recognition. I've always loved Rob Reiner's films, but there's been one thing missing in all of them, me. Uh, well, at any rate, Rob, Let's uh, get on with this award. I'm sorry this is neither the time nor the place to vent my feelings. I... <laughs> Robbie, this is your night. We're going to tell you all about Rob's life and career. But first, we want you to hear from someone who has known him longer than anyone other than his parents. He's probably one of Rob's earliest comic inspirations, certainly an inspiration for all of us. Rob's good friend and advisor on foreign markets, 
our pal, Sid Caesar. Bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs. Et vous en entendez ça pour les temps les mêmes. C'est vrai, nous l'en sont promis pendant les trois dîners ensemble. Nous tendons la femme et les chavres, les centres et la femme arde. Nous voulons tenir le grand directeur, Robert Régnier. Voltaire, Marshall Foch, les centres et la femme arde, sont en sorte de Bussy, dans son barème de femmes, et dans toutes les pipes, dans le coq, dans le les îles, sans soi les femmes, dans les îles, dans le Et quand ils sont vraiment la Samarienne. Good night, my hair, my hair. Die fallen sich an Richtern an Stubber, aber ein Lied und Robert Reiner. Es gefallen sich an Richtern an Reich, das ganze Direktor und Schlaber und Reich von Anderreich und Schlieber erlaucht. Sigmund Freud beim Beunderung. Die fallen sich an Richtern an Schlubber an, Friedrich Nietzsche, oh, der wäre andere Schlieber. Und Beethoven und Mozart mit anderen Schlieber an, und dann Robert Reiner. Es gefallen sich an Richtern an Stubber rein. Aber Rainer, der ganze, 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 ganze. Die Schlafferei nie war angefallen, die waren nicht in den Laden. Und das sehe ich, Signore, Signorine. Mit so viel Piazza, du siehst, ich glaube, ich bin so, la grande Signore, der Direktore, mit so viel, wie nicht von der Vittorio, wie der Sieke, weil nicht die Bälle schon gab. Marconi, du, 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 sono sì la Galileo Galilei, uh, ma la colava ci ne posso una che viene. Sono da sì l'aula con Cina Valotti, ma che l'angelo andrà in aborti, ve la cosa, la chippa, la poppa di poppa di poppa di poppa di poppa di poppa. Due su, dai su. Ai due, 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 You've done the oil, don't do she, don't do by God. May you have many, many more, and thank you. I don't know why I'm wearing these. They, I took them off a person who just passed out. <laughs> but they looked attractive. What was that? Oh, he's dead. <laughs> what would a tribute be without congratulations from all your closest friends? Now, here he is now. Rob, I've been the recipient of the award you're getting, and it's, uh, it's a wonderful feeling to, to have your peers say that your body of work, and apparently your body needs a lot of work, I'll tell you that right now, is, is um, is something that they look up to and admire. And for all the years, as an actor, as a producer and a director, um, it's a great compliment to say that you know where funny is. And thanks for helping me find it in me. What he said goes for me too. <laughs> now, here's a wonderful lady who won an Academy Award, my Academy Award, for her role in Misery. My story of my life. <laughs> Miss Kathy Bates. Kathy? <laughs> See you later. <laughs> As some of you know, I began my work in New York in the theater. But when I came to Hollywood in 1985, I was surprised to find that many directors and producers had never set foot in a theater. But lucky for me, a filmmaker named Rob Reiner had. He not only went to the theater, he read books. And I was to have the great joy and privilege of being directed by him in the movie Misery. Rob is an actor's director. You trust him. He knows how to talk to actors, how to get inside the brains and the skin of a character, and how to orchestrate long speeches. 
You know, sometimes when you're asked to take on an unusually colorful role, when you go way out on a limb, it can feel like you're floating alone, way out in space. Rob is Houston. Now let's take a look at the life and career of a wonderful guy. Hello, my name is Marty DeBerge. I'm a filmmaker. Men and women can't be friends because the sex part always gets in the way. You can't handle the truth! He didn't get out of the cock, the duty car! Metka Wiley Evans. Listen, how much is Just listen for a minute. I'm Mr. Not... Stein, listen to it. I'm not hearing anything. You would, though, if it were playing. Director, actor, writer. Rob Reiner has majored in creative achievement, whether they be comedies, dramas, or thrillers. Rob has discovered his secret for success. You can do a dramatic film, and you can do a broad slapstick comedy, although that is more difficult than a dramatic film. But to me, the tough thing is to do a film that has a reality base to it, that uh, it reflects life in some manner, and also makes you laugh. That, to me, is the hardest thing in the world to do. Uh, and when it's done right, to me, it's the most glorious kind of theater, whether it be film, television, or theater. At six and a half, he experienced an epiphany when he had a vision in his bedroom. He was about six years old, and he was combing his hair, and I guess he liked the way he looked in the mirror. So he said, I'm going to be an actor when I grow up. He said, but I'm going to change my name. I said, what are you going to change it to? He said, Carl. <laughs> And Rob did become an actor, appearing in many television shows and films. And now back to Dr. David Townsend. We're back and we've got a guest. Okay. Rob's famous father, Carl Reiner, and his partner, Mel Brooks, gave Rob his first break as a writer. When I was 16 years old, I actually wrote a joke that they used on The Ed Sullivan Show. And it was the greatest, one of the greatest moments of my life that I would think of something that Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks would actually use as part of their 2,000-year-old man bit on television. And it was the derivation of applause. And, I, and they, they said, well, how did applause first start? And he said, well, the first guy to applaud is you know, a guy named Bernie. When he saw something that he liked, he would go, oh, is that good? Oh, my God. He says, so if he really loves something, you could kill yourself. That's the way people applauded. Wow, is that the best thing? Oh, people actually hit themselves oh, in the face. Oh, boy. Wow. That hurts, though. Yeah, you're better than I stop. The first guy to pull his head out was, you know, Murray came, when nobody was looking, he pulled his head out, and the hands came together like that. Terrific. And terrific. And you're the best. That's how the applause, see? That's fast. That's how Murray did it. Well, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. In 1971, an old family friend who recognized Rob's ability to make people laugh gave him the role of Mike Stivett. Come and wear. Told us he's very funny, and he gave him a good job, too. You know something, Mr. Bunker? At first, I thought I misjudged you. And I was right. I did misjudge you. You're a lot more ignorant than I thought. <laughs> say, did you hear what he called me ignorant? Well, let me tell you something. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but you are one dumb polar. I just wanted to dispel the rumor that uh, Gene Stapleton and I were having an affair because it just wasn't happening. Well, even if you were having an affair, whose business of theirs or ours or anybody's? It's a personal thing. But Jerry, I, the point is, I wasn't having an affair. No. Did you ever have an affair with anybody in the cast of uh, the show? <laughs> no, no, of course not. So this not thing with Gene Stapleton was a very yeah. unique situation then. It was the... Uh... Norman Lear and Carol O'Connor set a tone in those rehearsals and in the making of that show, which allowed everybody to uh, uh, contribute the best way they could. And it's where I learned about, uh, you know, crafting scripts and, and directing. Rob directed his first film called This Is Spinal Tap. My baby fits me like a flesh tuxedo. I like to sink her with my pink torpedo. Because it was done as a, pseudo, as a rock mockumentary, pseudo-documentary, uh, we put it together like a documentary. Uh, we shot it completely ad lib, no script. We knew basically the structure of the film and what we wanted to have happen in a particular scene, but there was no dialogue written down, so it was all improvised. First drummer was uh, the John Stumpy Peeps. Oh. And he was replaced by uh, 
Stumpy Joe. Eric Stumpy Eric Joe. Child. Yes. And Eric. what happened to Stumpy Joe? Well, uh, it's not a very pleasant story, but no. uh, he's, uh, he, passed on. he died. Uh, he choked on uh, the, the the official explanation was he choked on vomit. It's actually he uh, away. It was actually someone else's vomit. It's not <laughs> it's ugly. You know, there's no real. Well, they can't prove whose vomit it was. They never, they don't have facilities in Scotland Yard to print spectrum photographing. You can't really dust for vomit. Rob's second film was the sure thing. It's fast and for hire. He's the calling wind. The seminal movie for me was Stand By Me. Um, it was the first movie that I made that kind of, I took a slightly different path than my father would have taken. And the fact that it worked and that it was, uh, you know, accepted was a, a very big, big thing for me. A very close friend of Rob's, Billy Crystal, appeared in his next film called The Princess Bride. We're close! Billy Crystal also starred in Rob's next hit movie, When Harry Met Sally, which contained one of the most talked about scenes of all time. What are you saying, that they fake orgasm? Most women at one time or another have faked it. Well, they have faked it with me. It's my favorite scene because it's funny, and it's my favorite scene because it's my mother, you know? Uh, I gave, I made, I immortalized my mother. So we're shooting the, the deli scene on the Lower East Side in New York. You got Meg Ryan, myself, and Rob's mom, Stella, sitting over there, and 40 extras, and a very sensitive scene to do for, for Meg. You can imagine it's very delicate to fake an orgasm in front of all of these strangers, you know, something you do with the person you're living with. Ooh. Are you okay? Oh. Oh, God. So Rob said, no, I'm, oh, Meg, I, I understand you're nervous. I'd like it like this. And he sits down opposite me. So it looks like now I'm, I'm dating Sebastian Cabot. So he starts having the fake orgasm. He starts pounding the table. He's screaming and yelling, oh, baby. Yes! Yes! Oh, oh, oh. He's, I mean, there are gherkins flying against, hitting windows, and stuff is rattling and screaming and yelling, and he's, he's sweating like um, Victor Buono after Thai food. He's out of his mind, and he finishes. Everybody applauds, right? And he goes like that, and she goes, oh, I, I got it, right? It really helped her. So now he, he says, buddy, come here, come here. I said, Rob, that was really good. He goes, I'm in a lot of trouble. I said, what? He said, I just had an orgasm in front of my mother. I said, no, nah, you were directing. He goes, no, no, no. I just had an orgasm in front of my mother. <laughs> Wardrobe. Oh, God. Oh. I'll have what she's having. Liberace records. Rob's next two films were thrillers. Once again, Rob identified with the lead characters. One desperately wanted people to take his work seriously, and the other was searching for his own light out of the shadow of his father. Did you order the code red? I did the job. Did you order the code red? You're damn right I did. Rob returned to comedy with the movie North. This was followed by another Rob Reiner mega hit. The American president. Do I date a lot? Yeah. No, how about you? Me? Well, lately I seem to be going out on a lot of first dates. Well, then you're experienced at this. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can ask me anything. Well, how are we doing so far? It's hard to say at this point. So far, it's just your typical first date stuff. I just did a picture called Ghosts of Mississippi. Uh, and I think that uh, I, of all the pictures I've done, I'm probably most proud of that. We asked Rob if there's anything he's not proud of. Well, I've had a lot of uh, a lot of things that I'm not proud of. Uh, in show business, uh, at the time, I was very thrilled to uh, to play a hippie in a Gomer Pyle show and sing "Blowing in the Wind" with uh, Jim Neighbors. Uh, uh, in retrospect, I'm not quite as proud of that particular episode. How many roads must a man walk down before you can call him a man? 